What's up, everybody? I'm Scott. And I'm Jason. And you're listening to Liquid Carnage. I want to start the show off by apologizing for my voice. Uh, It is spring in Arizona and the wind is blowing. So my allergies are um, off the charts this week. So I do apologize. that That sultry bear nasal baritone is sexier than anything, buddy. Yeah, you know what? And In that, fact, I, we might gain listeners just when we when we sell it on the, uh, you know, we advertise the sexy nasal baritone of Scott, the man, Kurt. You know, and, and that would be that'd be very cool if we could do that. I used to be the voice of, of my of my current job, and uh, I've been aged out of that. But I think this voice should at least give me a shot to come back and, you know, make a few new announcements here and there to, you know, make the people turn their heads. So how do you get aged out of a part of your job? Like, how does that happen? <laughs> what they say? Oh, I'm sorry. You hit 36. We can't, we can't use you anymore. You know, it's funny. I think in my case, I was uh, just, my job was devolving and they hired other people and they wanted to do more. So I said, yeah, go ahead do that. Cause I've been there, done that. And next thing I know, the, they're doing all the talking, and I don't even get consulted or asked anymore. I'm just the guy at the end of the hall. Do you know how long this show has been out there simply because of the baritone, sexy baritone voice of Scott Kern? I mean, this this show would have died with my voice. This show would have died like – I'm like a Tucker Carlson, man. Like, this show would have died like years ago if yeah, it wasn't for your voice, brother. You're not as nasally, and you, you don't have much, not much of a pitch, so you're not as bad. I as definitely don't. Hi, Dagen, when I get excited. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice Mike Tyson, though. I will give. Yeah. You that. Oh, that was Mike Tyson. Yes, I'm. <laughs> I, I'm just so sensitive. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes, it is. Um, yeah. But, no. You know, I don't know how it happened. It's just you know, sometimes things evolve, and and you're not able to do the fun aspects of of what you do for a living anymore because you moved on to other things. And for me, that's what happens. But others uh, cling on to positions of of authority or or fun at all costs, and I would say probably cost us. Uh, the opportunity for uh, evolution professionally. Yeah. Uh, You know, my mom teaches at a, uh, she teaches at university in Nevada, Las Vegas, but she teaches the adult learning program. Mm -hmm. And the adult learning program is basically, Hey, you're retired, but you still want to go take a class on something. So there's volunteer teachers who teach courses on a variety of different topics, you know, based on their experience from their careers. And one of the classes that my mom taught, uh, when she first started teaching there was it was called you're, you're never too old mm-hmm. and basically it was it was the point of hey you know as long as you keep breath, you know you keep breathing you have life to live and don't ever let anything stop you from living life yeah. and while i i totally agree with the premise you know i, I love the idea that you know we're, we're our older people are staying a little bit younger than our grandparents did you know like when they get to that older age um i also do feel though that there is a point where it's like, okay, like, for example, you get to an age where you just don't drive anymore. You know, you, you, you can't see as well. The, the cars are going too fast. It's okay to admit, hey, I've hit an age where I just don't feel comfortable behind the wheel. I'm not going to drive anymore. Yeah. But there are so many people, so many people that will never admit that. Well, that's the problem is you have to take the licenses away from those people. Like uh, Noreen's dad, bless him, 86 years old, he still felt, even though he's legally blind, he still felt that he could drive. Oof. And, and it's like, wh- where is it? I mean, yes, you want to live life to the fullest, but at what point do you kind of acknowledge, okay, I'm at an age now where I just don't do that anymore. You know, I yeah. just don't do that anymore. You know, For example, I... you and me, beer bonging. We don't do that anymore. We're past that age we 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 yeah, we, yeah totally we, past that age. We totally, totally past that age. <laughs> totally past that age. We we would never do that again if it was per- if the option presented in front of us. We would never put those young kids out of their misery and show them how it's done. If they if someone ever walked up and said, "Hey, do you want to try this?" I would yeah. never. Am I, oh, I, I, I would I would I would politely decline and say, "No, no, it's okay. I'm better than this now." But you're you're you've been subjected to it because they said, "Hey, look, Scott, you're too old. We need to get a younger voice for these promos." Well, they didn't say I was too old. I just they just said oh. like, you're too busy, so we started doing this and we started using this person instead. Oh. Yeah. So, I mean, what do you really say to that? Like, no, no, I'm not that busy. I guess I I'll find the time. I mean, I could have, but you know, that person needed something to do. So, same principle, just different different reasoning. You know. 
There was a, uh, and, and I mean, I'm going to nerd up a little bit because I know that uh, from her once, from time to time, I need to appease the executive producer. But uh, if you're a fan of Star Trek: The Next Generation, there was an episode that talked about this topic, and the the Enterprise came to a society uh, where um, once you reach the age of 65 or 63 or whatever the age was, this society had a major celebration of life. And then uh, basically executed you or, or, you know, ended your life. Oh, wow. And they've been doing it for thousands and millennia. And and, um, there was a scientist who has was on the verge of a major breakthrough of some sort of scientific wonder that was going to change the universe. Mm -hmm. Um, But he just ran out of time. And the, the dilemma was, you know, is it right? Should we be interjecting? into a culture where they have this practice, you know, Um, but they had determined an age, you know, they said, okay, this age, once you get to this age, you've lived the fullest life. Um, We don't have to worry about you getting old and not being able to take care of yourself and being a burden on your family. And, and they had taken that. And I, while it's, some of it shocks you, uh, some of it also says, you know, they've got a good point. I mean, if you didn't have to deal with the aches and pains of arthritis, or you didn't have to deal with the possibility of getting Alzheimer's and, you know, you were able to say, I live a full life, healthy life, vigorous, strong life. But then I ended it at a certain age. You know, I can see there could be a benefit to that. Maybe, maybe there would be a benefit to that. I don't know, man. I, I don't, I don't think going out on somebody else's terms is always the right way to go. I think if you're going to go out, you go out on your own terms. So I've got a hard time with that. Okay. Specific. Uh, the problem is some people don't let go. Yeah, I, I think case in my... point, like a third of the uh, senators in our Senate for the federal government need to like really reevaluate whether they should run for another six year term. You know, what's funny is like, a, a lot of them have openly admitted there should be term limits, but they're never going to vote it in because uh, in, in that scenario, the amount of uh, donors that they have giving them money and, and side deals with corporations and whatnot they're not going to give up that kind of income free flowing to them i mean it's it plus to have that kind of power no you have too many secrets too much money you're not going anywhere until you absolutely have to and that's usually death you know i guess i i don't know i mean they, they there was a news story out there about one of the senators from california who's 88 years old and basically is starting to, the rumor is that she's starting to so sh- show signs of, you know, lapsed memory, confusion. And, and I'm thinking, are you going to run for another term? I, I hope this is the last one. I really hope this is the last one. Well, you, but, you figure though, Chuck Grasserly, Strom Thurmond, you know, John McCain should have retired uh when he found out he had brain cancer and i think he stuck around till yeah you know the very end and you know deborah feinstein i mean you know she's, she's like 88 years old diane feinstein or diane feinstein deborah feinstein diane feinstein she's 88 years old like you've done you served your point okay you yeah. served your public it's time to let the new generation come on board like mm-hmm. you know move, move on e- even if it scares you you know like like I know the old people look at these young, some of these young, you know, senators and congressmen and stuff, and say, "Oh my gosh, I cannot hand over the reins of power to this group of yokel, you know, these yo- yahoos that are out there." Um, on the other side, though, are you serving the best thing for America by being past your prime? No, the problem with politics, and I don't, we don't need to dive all the way into politics today because I know how that that bothers our EP, but. The problem with politics is what it is today isn't what it was 20 years ago. It's not what it was 10 years ago. It, it's more visceral and it's more hardlined and extreme on both sides. And there's no middle ground anymore. Okay, perfect example. Let's not talk about politics. This happens all the time in sports. When a player gets to that age where if they leave now, they leave on top, they're, you know, but they play one more year. Right. Mm -hmm. And that extra year is like, oh, they left on the wrong year. They left the year earlier and said, it's time. Then they would have left on on the, you know, on top. But instead, they leave a year later or two years later and they're not the player they were. Well, 
I know this is going to be sacrilege, but Larry Fitzgerald should have left the year before. Okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, honestly, Peyton Manning should have left the year before. Granted, he left a Super Bowl champion. He did, but not uh, because but of him. Few people forget that he was benched for for Brock Osweiler that season and had to come back in the playoffs. And that defense with him that Super Bowl, he did enough to help the offense win. But uh, that Denver team that won the Super Bowl wanted on their defense more than one on Peyton Manning's arm. It happens in basketball a lot too. Like ba- basketball, it happens a lot. Because, Jordan did it twice, but he probably uh, came back that third time. Well, and, and but it, I, I, I mean, the thing about Jordan is, is that um, you know he was a tremendous player anyway. So even his little step down was not as bad as some of these players that just drop off, right? I mean, they just drop off. Uh, do you remember Jake DeLone? Mm-hmm. He was a Super Bowl quarterback. He brought his team to the Super Bowl, and within two years, they were like, this guy's a bum. Oh, yeah, he got cursed, yeah. That, that, yeah. that NFC the, championship game against Arizona, or division. Yeah, the when the it, divisional it always... round, yeah, the Cardinal curse, man. He never was the same again. Yeah, yeah. No, now, the question can, is, can you tell when you're when it's time to end? What can you tell? You can tell, but you know, if you can get if you think you can get behind this natural talent, I think uh, we have, we we see a great case of that in LeBron James today. Uh oh, LeBron, yeah, LeBron at 37 still has it, but he is not the player he used to be, even though he's he was close to winning the scoring title this year. Uh he doesn't carry a team and he's he's protecting his brand more than helping a team win and uh, he's the one that that orchestrated that Russell Westbrook trade that, that wants to keep Anthony Davis. He he made that team a bunch of old albatrosses. I mean, they, they're stuck, and that's fine with me because I'm a, obviously I'm a Suns fan. But LeBron is past his prime and holding on, and he's in a situation where it's not going to get any better for him. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and let's be honest. I mean, the days of him winning winning a championship because of him are probably Bro. over. They're over. I mean, he, he's got to he's he's got to want to have to learn to play with younger guys, and he doesn't want to do that. He's never he's never wanted to do that. So well, and maybe he can't do that. You know, maybe, maybe that's maybe that's one of the problems is these these older players, these older congressmen, they just don't know how to do it any other way. Well, I think you know, you know and that that might be it. I mean, but like I said, once you get to that point in your life where you know you're going to win re-election, you know your base. The job isn't that hard at the end of the day. They're paying for all your travel. You work, what, six months out of the year, if that. I mean, it, it's a sweet gig if you can get it. You've got $170,000 salary for the rest of your life regardless. Not, not you know, counting the, the benefits of, of health insurance and whatever else. So I, I think it's hard to, to, to really push off on that and say, you know, you shouldn't do it. If they're not going to put term limits in, I can't argue against them not doing it, you know. Well, but let's be honest, the regular people, what do they do? They retire at 65. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or they get phased out, like their company phases them out at 65. So why is it okay for some people to say, hey, look, at 65, we're giving you the opportunity to take an early retirement or to retire? You know, yeah. we don't see people work until their 80s in yeah. a manufacturing sure. plant, or we don't see people work in their 80s. Well, maybe McDonald's, you, you can't you, see that. You might, you might see that now. It's just- haven't planned or people can't afford to retire but you gotta look at it like this I, I don't think being a senator is backbreaking work there's a lot of there's a lot of politicking which you have to be into that if that's what you want to do uh, but really it, it's not six months out of the year like i said you're sitting in committee meetings and, and you vote on things when everything's in session um, if you're retired at 65, you want to find something to do. So you're basically going to join a rotary or any other kind of service club to give your time to and, and do something very similar. Uh, but you're going to be a fundraiser. That's not making any money at this, as opposed to someone who can win an election time and time again and get paid handsomely the rest of their natural lives. Well, I look at Thomas Jefferson, my boy, Thomas Jefferson. He was strongly petitioned to run for a third term uh, after his first two terms. He was 67 years old. So he wasn't, well, I guess that back in those days, that might have been considered old as shit. But, I mean, 67 years old, they asked him to run for a second term, and he just said, no, it's okay to not accomplish everything. I can hand it over to the next generation and let them yeah. take the torch, you know? And yeah. there's something very, like, I respect that a lot of knowing when to walk away. 
and just say, you know what, I'm going to leave some for the next time. And it, it, it's kind of sad when you see someone um, hang on for dear life uh, when it's like, it's okay. You know, like, like you said, Peyton Manning's a perfect example. He could have left a year early. He wouldn't have got the championship, but he could have left a year early and had a, a fan. No one would have questioned his career, right? No one would have questioned the skills and, and the accomplishments of his career. Um, all I'm going to think about for Peyton Manning is he was lucky he played on a defense that won the Super Bowl for them, and he got a Super Bowl, kind of like Trent Dilfer. Oh, absolutely. You know what you, I mean? You know, and, and you, you talk about, you know, being left, uh, wondering what to have, when to walk away. You know, the, the, the pandemic made us walk away. We're going to switch gears here a little bit as we get to the second half of the show. Made us walk away from a lot of hobbies we want, we, we love to do, a lot of shows we love to watch for uh, almost two years, to be honest with you, you know? Uh, going to sporting events, going to movie theaters. Uh, some of our favorite shows were basically benched for two years. And now that we're coming out of it, uh, we're being forced to remember, not being forced, but being asked to remember what happened last season before the next season kicks off you know yeah yeah no that's that's a really good point i mean it, it's like i i i watch i was watching the witcher in 2019 or two it came out in 2019 into 2020 and then two years before they released the next season and i had to watch the first season again because i forgot all the well, premise they did that with Game of Thrones too, with like the the last season. They waited two years before they got the last season uh, released, though. So yeah. I guess that inadvertently prepped us for this. But you know, I'm a I'm a big fan of, of shows like Better Call Saul, which is going into its final season. Uh, it starts this week, and it's been uh, since uh, 2020. It might actually be since 2019, because that was usually a fall show yeah. uh, that it actually had uh, new episodes. So maybe it was 2020. Either way, it's been at least two years since the the last season. Uh, since season five and the new season starts this week and i find myself trying to remember what happened and it's a very good show it's a very a very um captivating show so i had to go back and and, and wikipedia everything to get caught up on it and i feel like i prepared for it but uh, i went back and i watched the other another show barry uh, on the hbo have you ever watched barry i watched the first season yeah um, season three starts, and it's been uh, two years since uh, season two. So I'm trying. To get, I watched all season two to get caught up on it, and I'm very excited for that. That's another great show. But I feel like now that we're getting back to the reality of of the day to day life of of living in a, a non pandemic world, even though it's still considered a state of emergency, that I'm trying to remember what the hell happened. <laughs> some of these, some of these movies, some of these. Uh, last uh, these new seasons, uh, the, the girls went and saw the new uh, Fantastic Beast movie this weekend, and you know they wanted me to go, and I, and I politely declined because uh, I you thought, went to play, you went gambled. I went gambled instead. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> to be honest, I saw the first one. I, I didn't care for it. Yeah. Uh, I never watched the second one, so I, I used the excuse of I, I really I would be totally lost here, even though. Just, Oldest gave me a 90 minute dissertation on the first two movies to make sure I knew what was going on. I still politely declined, but we had some friends that that uh, hosted a, a Fantastic Beast pregame party on Saturday. So we went. Oh, wow. It was very cool. Like like they they had food based on the movie, and you had to just, oh wow that's you kind of fun. The sorting out to see what house you're in. You had to wear the house colors while you're in there. It was it was very fun. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but a lot of the guys were like you know you like I I never saw this. I never knew that this was a thing. And I said, but I guess we're going to the movies with the kids. And I said, well, it's, you know, you guys enjoy it. Have fun. They go, well, how come you're not going? I said, because I said no. Because <laughs> I have the ability to judge whether or not I'm going to enjoy like, this or not. And I told them, like, did you know, as a grown man, you have that ability? No. no. Now you're married or in a significant <laughs> relationship, you don't. Uh, uh, you do. <laughs> you do. Um, so they all went to the movie. And I guess it turns out the air conditioning broke in the movie theater, so it was hot as fuck. Anyway, so I'm glad I missed it. Oh yeah, so I got to spend a nice Saturday evening by myself watching the new Purge movie and Saturday Night Live, so I was very relaxed. It was very nice. You know that that kind of is 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 something hard too. Is uh, one when you have a when you have a hiatus like that between uh, w- you know one season to another, it's hard sometimes to get the writing back into yeah. rhythm uh it's kind of like uh like a basketball shooter right you know if, if you 
start off hot and then you kind of lose that rhythm and you can't make a shot. I think, I feel like sometimes the writing happens that way too. Like you'll have a, Ooh, this wasn't as good of a season as last season. Cause the writing just wasn't as tight. You know, it wasn't as good. Um, and you know, because of the delay, you kind of lose the focus. You lose your rhythm of writing. Uh, I feel like the script. Like, I feel like in this scenario though, you, you, I, I would like to think that you had ample time to get the script right because uh, you had nothing to do but sit and write a script. So I, I would think that I, these new seasons should be tighter and, and hopefully more precise because okay. they had more time to, to sit and actually lock themselves in a room and not be disturbed and, and, and you know, get the stories right, you know? Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot. Can you think of a series that you've watched where you said, you know what, they ended it right when they should have ended the show. They didn't go a season too long. They ended it perfect. They, they, they started, ended it perfect. It was the perfect length of a seat of a show. Um, Entourage. Oh, okay. I've never seen that. I never uh, saw that show. Uh, Silicon Valley. Um, a, a lot of them are, you know, and it's not because they did these twenty-two episode seasons like 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 network sitcoms. They they're you know those are HBO shows, right? You, okay, an episode season. So you you tell a story over ten episodes and you break. So it it's it's not as long and as drawn out. If you talk about traditional networks, I don't know. You know, it's I, I would argue that I think it's harder though because I don't watch like I have gotten away from watching television shows that are on network TV. Yeah. Um, I, I watch more of the, the, the shows that get released all at one time. And then I just watch all of them and kind of, I have enjoyed those more. Um, but uh, so it's possible that network TV, it could be just, I don't know some of the more recent shows on network TV. Yeah. And, and just thinking back, I'm not sure what, um, I, re- I really don't know. Like like net- network shows to have to sit and think about. I, I think I look I think back to like friends and that maybe you want a season too long. Um anytime anytime where the characters start doing real things like having children and moving into houses in the country, like how I met your mother kind of got that way to me. That yeah. last season was like Yeah, you probably should have cut it maybe a season early because it got really lame where everyone's making families now and everyone's getting married and having kids. Well, that's boring. Like who wants to watch that shit? I I think cheers might be the last one that I can think of that, um, that did everything the right way. That's the one for 10 seasons. But way writing was back then. Um, I think it worked out fine. I think, I think they were, they left it the right way, you know? Yeah, I, I personally, um, the two that I, I think ended exactly how they should have was um, uh, Boston Legal. If you ever watched the show Boston Legal, it no. was only five seasons, but every script, even in the final season, was a good script. But I think that if they tried to take it one more year, it would have gotten, it, it wouldn't have been good. And I got to shout out the Star Trek Next Generation. That seventh season was just as good as two, three, four, five. Um, but they ended it, and I liked the way they ended it, and I thought it was a good a good ending for that show. Yeah, um, you know, I'm going to go over there and say Breaking Bad probably is another good one that ended the right way. Um, I don't necessarily like the way they structured the ending, like like airing the episode wise, but yeah, I, I, th- I think that told a tight story uh, about a man who went full circle. Yeah. Okay. You know. Yeah, I I didn't like how um how I met your mother you know wrapped it up i didn't like that at all um i i i just thought it was one season too long um and i could probably think of a couple other episodes like i I didn't watch friends like noreen's a huge friends fan so she might disagree with me um unfortunately i thought that they uh they it seinfeld ended badly but that last season those episodes were so funny yeah i uh, they 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 ended all uh, they, they, you know twenty two episodes right twenty of them were fantastic the last two were horrible like and maybe it's because I don't know how you end a show like that maybe that's the problem too how do you end a show when it's basically every episode's kind of like our podcasts whatever yeah. came up that day it's it's funny because that's a lot like what the office is and 
I, I it's always on Comedy Central, so I watch that a lot on the weekends when I got stuff going on in the background. It's just like background noise, and I, and I love The Office because it's so awkward. But after Steve Carell left in season seven, that went on for two more seasons. Yeah, yeah. And season eight was rough. Um, as they cycled through, you know, uh, who's the who's the guy for the blacklist? The uh, James. Spader. Oh yeah, James Spader. Yeah. Um, and then they finally settled on how they get into the last, the last season was great, but if they could have just cut out that, that middle yeah. season eight, um, and, and made it less awkward. Uh, I just, I think that's another show that, that if it would have ended when, when Steve Carell left, it probably would have been okay. Um, mm-hmm. or maybe a few more episodes into season eight, just like half a season and called it good, but th- that, that yeah. made a little bit too long. You never want to jump the shark. And I think that's, you know, that's a term from Happy Days back in the 70s when Fonzie jumped a shark with water skis. Oh, God, that's right. I remember hearing that. Yeah. Once you say you, you jumped the shark, then, yeah. We need I mean, to it's season. time to end the show. Yeah. yeah. That's yes. a great example. Actually, that, that, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, we've gone way off the deep end. Because at a certain point, there's only so many stories you can tell that introduce new characters. And, you know, people can can shit on the walking dead a lot because it was so drawn out and it's been on for 12 years now, 11 seasons. Um, but it's finally coming to an end this year. And oh, it is. Yeah. And I think they've done a great job of changing out characters. Some have stayed all the way through and managed to survive, but you know, you don't get too attached. So as you bring in new characters and new leads, there's new stories to tell, even though, there's always a conflict with other groups or whatever else. There's still new personalities and new ways to, to navigate that. So I have to, I have to appreciate, you know, that maybe it went on a little too long, but I think they handled it very well. Okay. Well, and, and, you know, we have to also, you know, differentiate between it ending too long or the last episode was just not well done. It yeah. ended perfect, but the last episode was not good. Like yeah. I, I felt like Game of Thrones that last last episode. I'm not quite sure how you could have ended it, uh, but it was. Well, I thought it was it was perfect amount of time to end the show. The last episode just wasn't so wasn't good. As we wrap up the show today, what was what was the best final episode uh, you've ever seen? Oh man. Um... Uh, I, I, like I said, I really liked, um, the last episode of, um, of Star Trek, the next generation. I, I, I nerded up, but I loved that final episode. It it was just, it, it took all the science fiction and conglomerated it into, uh, wrapping up how the season evolved over the seven years or the show revolved over the seven years. Um, it, 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 it's just one of my favorite, favorite series. How about you? Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, two, actually the entourage finale with Mm -hmm. them. I did. Uh, and then I'm going to go way back and go with mash. Oh, that was a good one too. But see, that was good because what better way to end than the war ending, right? Mm -hmm. That, that, that's just like perfect kismet. And and really, it's funny if you think about it. It's a show that went for 10, 10 or eleven seasons, but you know, it was a three year war. Right, a lot happened to them in that. And I guess yeah. maybe like ten years. But I'm actually watching Mash on Hulu right now. And oh, okay. You talk about just a fun show, and you, a lot of the stuff you can't say anymore on regular TV. Like you, oh yeah, oh, and gosh. Have, have that stuff. But it's yeah, it's still just it's funny, and it's yeah. it's a classic show, and I, I really appreciated the way it ended. You know what? Um, I'm, I might watch that show again because I really, I really, um, I didn't watch it on CBS. I think it was, I think it was CBS that did that show, and I didn't watch it during its live run, except in pieces when my parents would turn it on. But um, it, it, the ones I saw were just amazing, and I think they did a good job of mixing in the comedy of the show into the serious moments of the topic. Yeah. Well, like they they weave those well that when they needed to be serious, they captured that very well. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. It's just a, just a good show. Yeah. But as we wrap up today's show, um, speaking of ending shows, uh, not the series, we're just ending today's show. Uh, if there's a series that you think went on too long or ended perfectly, 
Uh, give us your opinion on it. We want to hear it. Uh, hit us up on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, all at Liquid Courage. Or if you have new show recommendations for our EP, Tom, to get him through those warm, warm Colorado summers, hit him up on Liquid underscore EP on the Instagram and the Twitter. That was real good. Well, don't worry, people. Our show is not ending. This season will continue into season six very soon, and uh, we will be going high, full bore. There will never be an ending, except, you know, if we say at 90 that we need to stop the show, then we'll do it. That's fair. That's fair. All right. (laughs) Thanks for listening, everybody. We appreciate you. That was Scott. I am Jason. And as always, if you never know quite what to say, just have yourself some liquid carnage.